Hey everyone, we are the GOATS. We are part of the Embedded Security and Hardware Hacking course, and I'm Ingrid, and my teammates are Seth, Andrew, and Bronwyn. So this year, our design challenge was to write a secure protocol that would update firmware onto a bootloader, and as well as hack um, other people's bootloaders. So a quick flowchart overview of what our protocol is. We provision two random keys, and then we use those to produce for, uh, more keys in the firmware protect tool. And then we protect all of our data there. And then in firmware update, we take all that protected data and then we divide it into packets that we send individually to the bootloader, which decrypts everything and boots up the firmware. This is a more in-depth version. And then, so the tools that we use to protect our system. So the first one, as you saw in the flowchart, was scale build. We created two keys um, for the bootloader and then we kept them server side. And we actually use a function in firmware protect called HKDF, which um, generates an infinite number of keys. So um, using this method, attackers can't look at power leakage to determine what our keys are since we'll be using a new one each time. And then our next uh, tool is firmware protect where we encrypt plain text with um, the generated key and BL build and then we apply an HMAC on top of that ciphertext to implement authenticity. So in this tool, we use AES128 mode CVC and then an HMAC which uses the SHA-256 hashing algorithm. And then we also secure our metadata with an HMAC to make sure that no adversaries tamper with it. And the key for this HMAC was provisioned in BL build. And lastly, for the firmware update tool, we send the met metadata packet to the bootloader and then we send our byte packets after that. For our protocol, we decided to use um, HKDF to generate our cryptographic primitives. So our HKDF takes an assault and a password. Uh, the assault is created randomly each time. And this HKDF key generation creates our AES encryption and HMAC authentication key. So the advantages of using HKDF is that we can store the seed and the password and have it create an unlimited amount of keys meaning that space would not be a constraint. This is compared to if we are just to put a whole list of keys that would have taken up a lot of space and the stores may not have been able to support them. So our cryptographic primitive to encrypt is AES128. This will be responsible for providing our firmware, uh, protecting our firmware's confidentiality. It is used, there's a strong uh, diffusion through shift row and mix column. It is efficient and it gets the job done. Next is our HMAC. HMAC will provide integrity and authentication. What this means is that no one will be able to mess with our um, firmware that we send through in the in unsecure environment without us noticing. And it also makes sure that the firmware being sent is from the factory and not from a malicious um, party. But more specifically, we're going to use a cryptographic hash function, SHA-256. So this is an uh, overview of our protocol. So our point text is, gets encrypted with our AES, which is seated with our key one. Then that gets put through the hash function and that gets appended with along with the uh, cipher text. That way, in order to decrypt, we must verify the HMAC first before any decryption is done. That way, our attacker cannot just spam us with attacks and have us decrypt with multiple keys. There are some attacks that we considered and prevented against. Uh, we were concerned about people poisoning our metadata. So this basically meant that people would be able to change our metadata and then our embedded system wouldn't know if it's from us or if it's from an adversary. So in order to prevent this, we HMAC our metadata and sent that along with it. This allows the bootloader to 
verify our metadata that it's from us. And so then in, and then in turn, that prevents adversaries to just change our metadata. Another attack that we considered was key attacks. And to prevent this, we decided to use a pseudo random key generator. This allowed us to have a rotating set of keys that would change each time we send a new update to the bootloader. And this also prevented a, another kind of attack, side channeling attack, where they would basically read our energy levels or our frequencies and they could read they could generate their own keys by reading out those frequencies. Um, we also consider it about rollback, version rollback attacks, where the adversaries could write a version number into our memory, and that would allow them to upload a previous version onto the bootloader when they should not be able to. And so in order to do that, we basically put a check in a permanent space for versions to be version numbers to be stored and so we would always reference back to that area and if they aren't if they're of the update is lower than the one that's kept then it, the firmware is rejected our security highlight of our protocol is hkdf uh hkdf is a pseudo random key generator uh, it takes in two parameters, a master password, also known as a seed, and a salt. And each time we send up a firmware, salt is randomly generated. And so this allows us to have variability in our keys. And this, another standout feature of HKDF is being able to generate multiple keys from just those two inputs. So we could have like as many keys as we would want for our bootloader if we wanted it. Uh, for our attack phase, we were considering these kinds of attacks. Uh, buffer overflow. Uh, a buffer of overflow attack is basically being allowing us to be able to input as much as we would like into a variable size. If the variable size is protecting a certain amount of data and we overseed that data, then we can start overriding other variables in the code. And if we do even more overflowing on that one variable, we could even potentially jump security checks in the code by just circumnavigating entire ch uh, chunks of code. Uh, we were also looking at rollback version attacks where teams were in HMAC the metadata, where we will be able to change it and then flash it to their systems and the system wouldn't know whether or not it was from the manufacturer or from the adversary. Uh, we also checked for unchecked firmware and metadata. So these attacks are looking for whether or not uh, metadata and firmwares are encrypted or HMAC. If they're not, then that leaves, us, leaves them open to attack. And going along with this, uh, unchecked firmware and metadata, if you say, if the program is continually expecting amounts of data, that allows us to also do a buffer overflow attack by continually sending data. So some of the things that we would change in our protocol is using the HKDF function, because even though it is a really nice function, it just wasn't beneficial considering how much time we invested into it. And then also what happened was we didn't plan as well. So we had a lot of implementation issues and messy code. And some of our conclusions is um, that we would better identify what is more important, such as coding in a more efficient manner and implementing better, as well as not, I guess, not trying to spend so much time generating random keys. We also, um, also next time we hope to plan our code better and better divide up the work so that we wouldn't miss important attack lectures that forced us to fall behind in the attack phase. <laughs>